fuse over there on the frontal bone. And these are the sides of the plates uh, which are fixed on at the lateral orbital rim area. And this is also, uh, also part of view of the same patient. This is after suturing and uh, of that coronal uh, flap. And um, th this is this is the mid cone area or uh, tip area uh, which guides you that this is the midpoint of the suture. This is the post of CT scan of the same patient. Now look here that the zygomatic bones which were grossly displaced downward, now these are properly positioned. And the bone is approximating with the properly reduced with the frontal bone and fixed with the plate. Arches are well reduced and fixed with the plate. And this is a graph. This is a graph hanging down in the nasal area so as to give support to the nasospinal area. And this is arch on the other side, well reduced. Uh, this one also. This is relatively from the frontal spec, the scan. The, the graph is in the nasospinal area, uh, left orbital rim area, arch area, in orbital region, plate uh, in orbital region, and uh, plate at the <coughs> at the zygomatic region. These two plates, these this area was approached intraorally, intraorally, uh, and the, uh, all other sutures are uh, fracture areas. These were approached by the pronal plate. And this scene was made on the face of the patient. This was a pre-op CT with gross displacement. This one. Gross displacement of the both zygomatic bones, zygomatic urinary complexes, and increased orbital volume. Now, this is a post up CD, um, uh, 3D C, uh, reconstruction of uh, CT scan. The, the, the well approximated uh, lateral orbital rims. Look here, uh, they were pre op, there, was, uh, there were gaps, and downward placement of the lateral downward uh, placement of the uh, zygomatic urinary complexes bilaterally, but here these are properly reduced and fixed with the plates. And here, this is a, the grafted bone for the nasal complex reconstruction. And this is a uh, reconstruction of infobital margin. And this is a uh, reduction of fixation of the buttress region also. Okay, this is another case with, with, with a combination of zygomatico maxillary complex fracture as well as with grossly displaced condylar fracture and ramus fracture. If I can tell you the orientation of this, here is the, the this is a pre op. CD, CD scan of the patient. Here is the gap at frontozygomatic suture. This tetraport bone has come down after fracture as well as moved medially and posteriorly. There is a slight fracture of the zygomatic arch also. And this is the uh, remus of the mandible. And its condyle was over there before trauma. But after traumatic assault, you can uh, appreciate this is glenoid fossa, this is articular eminence, and this is zygomatic arch. And, and, and there's no condyle in its normal position. Here is the condyle. It has grossly displaced. And here is the third molar of the patient. Third molar after traumatic assault, it has displaced and it has gone into the soft tissue. In this, this view also, look here. The third molar is on outer spec. And then is the remus. And condyle is, in, is medial to this. This is how uh, uh, high velocity injury is uh, was, was this and it uh, has caused the gross displacement of other view, 3D view of the same patient. That, that is that is gross displacement of zygomatic bone. But fortunately here also the bone, body of zygomatic bone is intact, which also guides us to properly reduce the segments. Look here, gap at frontozygomatic suture, increased orbital volume, disruption at infobital uh, margin, Disruption at zygomatic urinary complex area and disruption at zygomatic arch region and no condyle in its original glenar fossa region. Here is the condyle. What is there? Look here. The third molar from its original position, it has displaced into the soft tissue of the, of the buccal uh, area and the neck area. And this is the remus. Remus after fracture, it gets inverted. It gets inverted. And condyle also after the fracture, it has it get inverted. This is the mandibular condyle over there. Uh, from medial to outward, this, this, there is the body of mandible, then there is the inverted condyle, then this is the ramus, and then this is the third molar. And um, uh, this can be well uh, appreciated on this view also. That is gross increase in the orbital volume on the traumatized side. This is the body of zygomatic bone. This is the body of, uh, of, 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 of mandible. And then this is the condyle, inverted condyle. And this is the ramus, and this is the third molar. And the, here is the, uh, the, the fracture at the infobital margin and zygomatic commingling buttress region also. Okay, what we done? This patient had existing laceration. We have approached through the existing laceration and then we expose the underlying bones and then we identify the bone segments 
and we try to orient these. And while uh, bringing this uh, condyle from here to here, it was separate from the soft tissue. This is a condyle. This is the ramus of the mandible. And here is the body of mandible. And this is the, in the above area, that is the zygomatic bone area. This is the medial canthus area. This is the eye uh, uh, lesion of the patient. And this, this is the cheek tissue. And this is the proper orientation from down to, uh, to uh, towards the above. And this was the, uh, the uh, displaced bone, or the, I think displaced tooth is this one. And uh, then what we then done, we have taken out these bone segments. And then we, uh, from, uh, while, treat, uh, while uh, uh, treating this patient, we have taken out this, uh, this ramus as well as the condyle. This is the condyle with its subcondylar region and the uh, sigmoid notch region and the ramus region. And this is the men, uh, also the ramus region. And what we have done, we have taken out these segments because these were, uh, while reducing, these were segments were, uh, were uh, the soft tissue has detached from these segments. And then we have taken out these and we uh, place them in their proper orientation. And then after that, after that, we fix this with, with the two plates. When you apply two plates at the, at the subcondylar region, the first plate should be parallel to posterior border of ramus of mandible. The other should be some, at some angle that converging squarely and diverging inferiorly. This is the inner surface of the ramus of mandible. You have, have been, have, uh, may have seen the inner surface of ramus on cadaveric. Uh, mandible, but I think not have not seen on the on the live patient. This is the of the live patient that uh, the inner surface of the and these are the tips of the screws. This is the outer surface and this is the inner surface. And just for academic purposes, we have taken take of this uh, also that this is the outer surface fixed with the plates and this is the inner surface. The tips the tips of the of the screws are visible over there. And this is a fracture and this is a fracture. And this is also fracture which we have then united with the body of mandible. Look here. This is after placing and after fixation. This one. That is zygomatic bone. It was fixed with the frontal bone as well as with the temporal bone at the arch region and at infobital region. And okay, I will highlight this again. Uh, this, this plate is at, at, at lateral, uh, eyebrow, uh, sorry, lateral orbital margin and to access this lateral orbital area, we have made in CN here uh, as lateral eyebrow in CN. But all other areas were accessed through the insisting laceration. And then uh, the, this is fixation of body of zygoma with the arch. And this is at infobital region, uh, fixation of body of zygoma with the frontal posterior maxilla. And here, uh, body of zygoma with the, with the maxillary bone at zygomatic bone buttress region. And this is, the, this is the segment which we have uh, uh, taken out and then, then we have fixed it outward. And then this was fixed with the body of mandible here with two plates further. And this is after closure. Look here. This is subcuticular. The, these sutures are the subcuticular sutures. No apparent uh, 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 thread is there. Only on the, this side and this side. These are subcuticular. These are interrupted sutures. If it, the incision is in, a, in the form of a straight line on the face, there are single incision, you can go uh, 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 with the subcuticular incision. If, but if, if, if it is a, a curved incision, uh, or, or, or a combination of multiple incision, then you have to go uh, with the interrupted technique. Okay, this is the post-op scan of the same patient. Post-op scan of the same patient. Look here. A well reduced zygomatic bone at frontal zygomatic suture, at arch region, infobital region, buttress region, and at subcondylar two plates and body of the uh, mandible two plates over there. And also from some other view, the, these, these, these again the same plates and uh, uh, same bone, now well reduced. That this is from frontal view, that lateral orbital ring, well reduced and fixed, arch reduced and fixed, infobital region reduced and fixed, and then, then buttress region reduced and fixed and this is the condyle and uh, angle and body region reduced and fixed with the plate. Now look here the condyle it is well seated in the glenar fossa which was inverted over there over there and thermal was removed and this is I think the last case uh, I think uh, uh, it was a lengthy lecture this is the last case I think. Uh, again uh, 3D CT scan of the same uh, of, of, of a patient with, with a linear fracture at superorbital rim and, and frontal sinus region, and also on uh, the fracture of the frontal plastic maxilla with 
in the nasal parietal region and the step decompy at infobital region and uh, then then at zygomatic buttress region and also at the at the uh, lateral orbital region at front zygomatic suture region uh, uh, from lateral view the same patient that uh, here you can appreciate some displacement at front zygomatic suture at infobital also and uh, and and uh, Dr. Rehan, I should go fast or uh, with the same pace? You are going with the same pace, no issues with okay. the speed okay. now. Okay. Okay. Please avoid these lines. <laughs> it is these lines who have gone. Okay, and this is the, the thank you very much. This is the uh, uh, frontal bone because it may cause. Uh, uh, some dis disruption uh, may or may not be uh, so focused then uh, on the fine issue. Okay, thank you. Uh, this uh, uh, for, uh, disruption or displacement at fratozygomatic suture, at infobital suture, and some inward displacement of the zygomatic arch also. And uh, here the fracture at uh, uh, zygomatic community buttress region, but it is not so grossly displaced over there. And these are post-up CT uh, scans of the same patient after reduction fixation of suborbital ring of the info zygomatic comedy complex at infobital ring and then lateral orbital ring at frontozygomatic suture and zygomatic comedy buttress region. Okay, on this patient, just slightly, I will tell you that uh, how we have to fix. There, there could be just a reduction with conservative techniques if the fracture is stable it is not falling down then leave it as such may also work if there is if there is the, uh, the after reduction let's suppose with Gillies approach and you have uh, 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 you are going just for conserve with the conservative techniques if there is no uh, uh, no falling down of that that segment then leave it as such if it drops down then open the zygomatic you may be buttress region and play it that area. Okay, one may advantage of Keen's approach is that that is intraoral. For that Keen's approach, you will make vestibular incision with the same. If in case of Gilly's approach, you have to you, you have made incision in that in, in the in the temporal fossa region, and if you have to play the buttress region, you have to make another uh, vestibular incision intraorally. But with the Keen's approach, as you are, uh, are approaching through the same incision intraorally. With the same incision after reduction of the zygomatic bone, you can uh, fix it at the buttress region through the same incision. This is the advantage of Keen's approach over the Gilly's approach. But uh, if you are more trained with the Gilly's approach, you can, uh, 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 if that works in your hand better than go with that. that. Okay, that if, and then this is the single point fixation at buttress region. But at least when you fix, at least there should be two point fixation of zygomatic bone. Either it could be one point with the wire, other point, uh, point with the plate, or both points with the wire, or both points with the plates. This, uh, this could be, uh, then in a previous, uh, just in the start, I have described single point fixation at buttress region, then two point fixation, and then those two points should be either one at buttress, the other at infobital, in cases when FZ is not distracted. If FZ is also distracted, then one plate at buttress, second ego will be buttress region, the other at frontozygomatic region, at FZ suture region. Front FZ means frontozygomatic suture. That is at lateral in orbital. Region. Okay, that will be if, if uh, the three point fixation is required, then at buttress region, at uh, frontozygomatic region, and at infobital region. What I do, I uh, uh, approach this infobital area. In, uh, with that intraoral approach, I don't make an other incision in the infobital region unless, uh, until unless there is orbital associated orbital floor fracture also, and we have mm, uh, to graft the floor also. And if, if there are multiple segments in the infobital uh, region, then I make uh, an, uh, other incision at the infobital region because that incision has many many complications and has, uh, is not static and so forth. Okay, if there is arch fracture also and you have to open that, then you can go with the pre auricular approach. That is that's the procedure approach. Pre auricular approach, or with the uh, modification of pre auricular approach, or hemi coronal approach. Or if the frontal fracture also, or there are uh, bilateral arch fracture or bilateral uh, uh, asset suture fracture also, then you have to raise the coronal flap with, uh, for that purpose. 
and uh, uh, with a clonal flap uh, as well as with the intraoral approaches you can uh, uh, fix whole male face also and, uh, uh, and the sequence of fixation if there is tripod malar fracture with abscess distracted then open the frontosegmentic suture hold that with the transosseous wire and fix first plate at 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 zygomatic medial buttress region then second plate at in forbital region third plate at the uh, uh, plate or just tighten that wire which you have passed at the frontosegmentic suture area if there is arch fracture also then you have to fix the arch first of all if the arch fracture is not there then fracture the buttress region first okay this was about fixation okay complications complications could be pre operative complications could also be there but these could be more commonly uh, related to the medical status of the patient or if the patient is anxious or maybe uh, anesthesia related complications pre operative complication just listen uh, most significant complication is bleeding in whole of the maxillofacial surgical procedures what i learned is the most significant uh, complication is the bleeding especially if you will not be able to control that bleeding that is the most significant complication far off but there could be the uh, more damage to the bone more damage to the neurovascular bundles and if there is damage to the uh, iatrogenic damage to the sensory nerves definitely there could be this uh, neurosensory deficit in the form of hyposthesia hyperesthesia paresthesia anesthesia dysesthesia depending upon the severity of injury and if uh, there damage to the motor nerves there could be motor dysfunction and uh, here in case of zygomatic medial complex fractures the damage to sensory nerves could be infraorbital nerve zygomatic facial nerve zygomatic uh, temporal nerve or in certain cases where you have to raise the coronal flap flap suborbital or supratracheal nerve and vessel and in case of motor nerves there could be damage to the branches of the facial nerves especially if you are going with the preauricular approach or hemicoronal uh, uh, approach and uh, uh, um, the most vulnerable branches could be temporal branch of facial nerve that is also called frontal branch of facial nerve or the zygomatic branch of facial nerve what will happen with these uh, uh, if if there is damage to the uh, to the sensory nerve again what uh, i have uh, told the uh, complication and with the motor nerves where there could be loss of uh, uh, wrinkles from forehead ipsilateral forehead or in case of bilateral bilateral loss of wrinkles from forehead or there could be difficulty in the closure of the eye once there is difficulty of closure of eye is there there could be bells phenomena also or, or rolling uh, uh, upward rolling of the eye here. okay uh, then uh, the, if if there judicious uh, drilling of the bone while uh, while placing the screw and you are not drilling with the, with the, with the saline irrigation because uh, then then what will happen there will be heat generation due to heat generation there will be more the bone damage once the bone damage is there what will happen there could be necrosis of the bone once the necrosis of bone is there then the, uh, in uh, uh, post operatively you, you may end up with the osteomyelitis or necrosis of the segments also or post operatively the screw displacement could be there breakage of the wire could be there or wire may may tear through the cut edge of the of the drill edge of the bones these are the complications the fracture of the plate most commonly it is post op complication but post operatively if you uh, bend it too much or uh, again and again then it uh, there could be fracture of the plate or uh, there could be, be soft tissue injury of the patient or you may get uh, also soft tissue injury or the this after displacement of the fissure part you may get injury to your fingers also but it's a rare in experience then okay then um, uh, then breakage of the tip of the drill bit you use uh, to drill for the holes or or breakage of the of the tip of the fissure bar could be there while drilling okay uh, uh, then too much soft tissue damage of uh, 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 sometime uh, while uh, continuing your surgery with the uh, drilling whether you have drill it becomes hot and if you are not, have not retracted properly the soft tissue there could be damage to the soft tissue also with that hot and this are also burning of the soft tissue okay the our inability to achieve proper occlusion in case of multiple facial fracture or pen facial fracture or inability to reduce properly the zygomatic bone this could be our inability to uh, uh, to get proper orientation of the eye globe also then uh, then this will lead to post operative complication post operative complication what could be that is persistence of diplopia persistence of anophthalmosis persistence of hyperglobus persistence of hypoglobus 
or male union, non-union, or delayed union, osteomyelitis. If osteomyelitis is there, then there could be draining sinus, first discharge, infection, or swelling, or pain and tenderness in that area could be there. Or persistent malocclusion in case of associated fractures, when there are occlusion disturbance is there. Or post-operatively, then uh, more with uh, motor dysfunction could be there, neurosensory deficit could be there. And um, uh, yes, there could uh, be, be uh, complication associated with your hardware. Like long, on the long term, the plate may be palpable, maybe get exposed, maybe fractured, screw displacement could be there. Or, um, uh, 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 or in late stages, there could be still limited mouth opening, uh, or, or there could be diplopia extra, these could be. Okay, and, and, and for pandemic purposes, we can divide these complications into immediate complications, intermediate complications, and late complications. Immediate complications are the complications which we encounter within first day of surgery or within 24 hours of the surgery. Intermediate complications are complications which occur during the hospital stay of the patient, and late complications on the long term follow up. And among the late complications, scar is a very, very significant complication, especially from patient perspective. And these complications, the other way of classifying these complications would be related to surgical procedure. We have discussed these in, uh, uh, in the part of communication. Related to hardware. The hardware means whatsoever you use to fix the bone, plates, screws, extra, are, are, are the, are the, are the, are the wires. Fracture of bone paper wire, fracture of the wire, fracture of plate, screw displacement, uh, leading to osteomyelitis, palpable plate, plate phobia could also be there. Sometimes the patient, different problem patient may relate with the plate and patient may come that remove these plates. This is a uh, hardware related problem. Related to healing, scar is a very, very uh, 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 significant complication the patient is concerned, especially with the infobital incision. They could, with, the, with the different types of infobital incision, if, uh, if there's infobital incision, there, there could be scar, bad scar, or with other incisions also. There could be hypertrophic scar, there could be keloid formation. These are the common complications. Whenever you make incisions, you can mention anywhere these complications. And in case of uh, lower eyelid incision, with the infobital incision, when the incision will heal with, with slight fibrosis, there could be eversion of eyelid. Eversion, outward. Moving up eyelid. This is ectropion. This is called ectropion. And with 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 this, the same complication can occur with subtarsal insignia, with subsealing insignia also. And with transconjunctival insignia, which you make in the conjunctiva, when the, that will heal, that will pull the eyelid inward. And this is this is entropion. Entropion. With the transconjunctival insignia, there could be entropion. And uh, Never later we have discussed these also and with the, uh, the yes with the coronal flap with the preauricular incision in the in the in the hair bearing area there could be partial alopecia loss of hair could be there or, uh, or some infection scalp infection could be there these are different healing related complications and um, uh, I think I have uh, discussed all these and in these, these pictures also these can, uh, these are pictures also show the, uh, are just to show different types of complications hardware related complication and and patient procedure later whatsoever. And like here, this is a scar. This is a scar. And the, yes, this uh, uh, still there could be aesthetic deformity if it's not properly reduced. Sorry, if not properly reduced, there could be still aesthetic deformity over there. Like outward going of the arch is still there. Flattening of melon area could be there. These could be the uh, the complications. But these are long term. Our persistence, limitation of mouth opening. And then there are different ways how to manage these long term complications. These are the latest advances. This is the last slide, I think. I think, yeah, second last. Uh, thank you for uh, sharing. Latest advances. Now, the, uh, not in present in Pakistan, but the people are doing in the in, uh, internationally. These, uh, using these techniques also. That what they do, they take the 3D reconstruction of the of the patient, of image of the patient. That is that is sorry. That is that is a dicom image, dicom image. And with the CAD CAM technique, from that image, a stereolithographic model of the patient is made. That is with the with acrylic or with the polyurethane. On, of, of the traumatized patient is made. And what is done, <clears throat> done 
in with the with the soft uh, software programs the fractured areas are cut down on the on the on the on the on the software and these are placed properly in their orientation by comparing with the normal side or with, by comparing with the ideal one and uh, once you, they have placed on in the software they have placed their the the fracture segments in their proper orientation in the pro uh, is that it they have done on the software they have done the reduction of the segment and after reducing they get they get the model of the 3d model of the patient and they uh, and after getting this model they send that model to the surgeon and surgeon can pre bend the plates on those models this technique will save part of time but now with the latest technologies what they do they also invent those pre bend plates they uh, they uh, they make those pre bend plates with with, with laser cutting etc and uh, uh, then then there is computer aided surgery computer aided surgery also mm -hmm. then there are different endoscopic techniques with miniature incisions endoscopic techniques of reduction and fixation of the fracture mm -hmm. then there is technique of navigation surgery or robotic surgery that a person sitting somewhere else can perform surgery in the other areas of the world this is robotic surgery mm -hmm. and the use of resolvable plates which may need not to be removed these are different latest advances which uh, uh, could be uh, if someone asks you you can tell me the different answer this is a conclusion displaced fractures required fixation with different types of plates mini plate is most commonly used plate micro plate can be used at infobital margin or in children and resolvable plates can also be used especially in children and growing children because these these uh, mini plates they have some uh, uh, a growth effect on the children and gilly's approach is very commonly used and conservative approach for cold as well as depressed sigmoidal cone fractures but in case of gross displacement as you have seen in the cases also uh, the, you have to open and and then you have to fix but you have a good idea of surgical anatomy of surgical techniques with the instrumentation good surgical hand also and in in uh, uh, but in case, in certain cases when you work there could be complications also and if there is persistent problem there are persistent complications that they uh, they they further require management and sometimes if you uh, you uh, you are facing with certain complications and uh, and you, you are not going to refracture the bone you can camouflage those with certain soft tissue aesthetic surgical procedures also like soft tissue grafting or in certain other procedure we will discuss at some other time so thank you very much and if you have any question you are more than welcome thank you so much dr asif for your marvelous presentation and it was really very very long people <laughs> might be people might be get bored but definitely it was quite informative i am i am opening a poll you can rate this also all those who are i have i am opening no no those who are participants they they can rate okay. your presentation okay okay and Sorry. secondly how much was the session informative clearly it can't be okay. and secondly i will like to guide everyone who are in this meeting our session gets live on facebook also if someone disconnected they can get live from there also and we will not allow anyone to re enter because we are also listening the lecture and we cannot divert our attention definitely we all so who are what, what, what you are saying what you are saying that uh, you have to join just uh, from very start of the lecture yes, yes definitely yes definitely they have to start from the lecture and till the end if they got disconnected they can join on live facebook also and okay. they, they will not uh, be able to join the zoom then yes definitely because we are also listening and we cannot focus on the lecture for this okay okay then this causes a disruption huh? yes definitely so we were in start we have 98 participants and those dropped down oh. to okay. almost 21 they must be a lengthy, lengthy lecture or they were constrained that is not uh, a related topic huh? <laughs> no they they actually got disconnected sometimes so they cannot reconnect okay, okay. and, uh, and i think i think, I think uh, this whole theoretical as well as clinical material 
is uh, i think very very required especially especially if you have uh, a mind to go in uh, in, in for, for, for order and next exercise in future yes definitely it was whole clinical based and it was quite informative too okay i think we have, there, yeah. there will okay. be a, sorry there will be a quiz after this lecture by here dates we have mentioned i will zoom it okay by 8th june 8th june there will be a quiz online on our website also whoever attempts the quiz and scores 70% like it will be a test whoever gets score of 70% they will be able to get their certificate of this lecture okay are there any questions uh, rating is over or uh, uh, still you have uh, some slides for rating or something else you want to say something else if someone has any question they can raise their hand we will allow his mic okay, to open I, uh, and uh, uh, the and chat. they can question okay i am opening the chat box no audio no audio same okay kindly connect your chat you have to select to join what was the name of question mark in scene okay the first question is what was the uh, was the name of question mark in scene alkyat bramley bramley alkyat or alkyat bramley in scene okay then uh, uh oh, sorry should i forward the question you can answer sorry uh, i'm reading the uh, questions now first uh, question uh, related question is what was the uh, was the by i think hasan nawaz what was the name of question mark in cn it is alkyat bramley in cn there are different modification of pre auricular in cn the most commonly used is, uh, is the alkyat bramley alkyat bramley alkyat modification uh, in cn it, uh, it also has uh, different other indications were we'll discussed some other time but the name is alkyat and bramley in cn then by question by fatima to your sir do we have to prepare all the details of the clinical procedure for example no you don't need each and every detail but definitely the clinical scenarios will increase your uh, your uh, you can say that, uh, that approach level and mental level and uh, this uh, will uh, will have uh, will give you a clear image of the procedures and clear idea of the of the uh, of the theoretical procedures also once you have seen the uh, the procedures uh, uh, then then when you will study from the books definitely you will have a clear, clear understanding of that but you don't need to have uh, at your level uh, you don't need to have to prepare each and everything of these there yeah, because i think there are certain uh, post grade uh, students also attending this they at their level this is mandatory and when in the order approach is preferred uh, for uh, for uh, uh, any uh, no. in case of zygomatic complex fractures when you have to reduce and fix buttress region zygomatic will be buttress region or i personally also approach in orbital area with the same technique even above the orbital nerve at the orbital margin i use uh, used to reduce and fix with the orbital thickness a little bit tricky and uh, slightly difficult for the surgeon but um, we can approach that area also with with orbital technique and uh, uh, we should avoid orbital scene until unless there is there, there is uh, uh, orbital floor fracture i pre personally prefer in orbital in scenes are transplant in scen only in case of in, in orbital uh, in case of orbital floor fracture okay uh, so what's the name of question mark in scen again same question okay uh, yes no audible any other question which which plates we should avoid while treating a child these uh, mini plates we should uh, avoid you uh, if we want to use these we have must have to remove these because in growing patients these plates may cause a stress shielding effect and as well as they may cause some growth retardation or uh, when the bone growth is there they may get submerged within the bone and they have some effect on the on the growth also and we have to need to we have need to remove these plates in case of uh, children uh, if you we are using non sawable or mini plates or micro plates but uh, 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 
the problem with the job of place is that these are relatively uh, technique sensitive and difficult to use moreover these are relatively expensive and not every patient can afford these plates and but definitely the um, uh, job of place these should be preferred in case of chair what are the pros and cons of intra oral approach uh, intra oral approach uh, uh, Limit, relatively limited access could be there with the intraoral approach, but it has relatively benefits as compared to pros and cons because the, the, there will be no uh, 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 static problem with that approach. But it will give definitely a relatively a limited access as well as uh, uh, there, too much retraction is required. And once once you go for too much retraction, definitely after uh, too much retraction of the tissue to get access. Uh, this will lead to uh, uh, this will lead to uh, to more swelling and more uh, relatively more uh, effect on the soft tissue and uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, in case of in, in power of the vestibular and in case of zygomatic bone uh, zygomatic bone complex fractures there are some chances of damage to the infobital nerve also if you are not so skillful and uh, with 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 the soft tissue retraction there could be uh, 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 damage to some soft tissue or while drilling if you are doing with the with the, with the, with the, uh, proceeding with the, with the intraoral approach while drilling if you are uh, hand piece and but these are get hot then there could be uh, uh, heat injury to the soft tissue with the intraoral approach and limited relatively limited access the person you are uh, who are uh, assisting you not everyone may be able to uh, to to, uh, to properly visualize the procedure all right. If there is any and when, when there's when especially if you are in CNS, uh, and, and moreover with the intraoral approach, if the the, the uh, buccal pad of fat it gets exposed, this will come. Uh, uh, there will be more more and more damage to that fat, and this will also uh, will will complicate your procedure. And because the fat, it is relatively difficult to uh, to to retract that fat, and with every uh, uh, time uh, with with the uh, running handpiece, the fat will come out with the, with the handpiece. And uh, there is damage to that buccal fat pad also. And if if you go more posteriorly uh, with the intraoral approach, there could be damage to the tiger plexus. Uh, also, there could be bleeding from that area. And uh, more inferiorly, uh, if, uh, if if you are doing more muscle stripping, there could be limited mouth opening in certain selective cases. Yes. Okay. Any other question? Everyone should ask. I think I should not feel shy. If you have some question, any question, you should ask. And if anyone wants to ask live, I think uh, uh, someone if raises hand, you should. Yes, I will. I will her. unmute him. Yes. If anyone can want to say something, either in English or Urdu, we can go. No problem. Sometimes people may feel that I English There is another question. There is another So there is another question. FC fractures. How should we proceed? Sorry. How should we? FC fractures. FZ. Frontal zygomatic. Yes. How we should proceed? How we should proceed to kindly repeat it? Yes. Okay. Mera khayal hai, meri to sari story hi isi ke gherin kumpi rahi hai, haan? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Frontodagmatic suture, the uh, first one, definitely if there is, uh, uh, there, there is some fracture, we have to diagnose it properly. We have to take history of the patient. After clinical evaluation, once you have diagnosed that if, if there is frontodagmatic fracture, uh, suture fracture, we have to say that, uh, see that it, either it is it is undisplaced or displaced. If it is displaced, we have to reduce it. Then we have to select our technique whether we can reduce it. With the, uh, usually, when FZ is distracted, we have to open it. Usually, that is managed with open technique. And once you have to open it, then we have to select whether, whether we have to go with with, with lateral libro in CN with upper blepharoplasty. In CN, I uh, usually modify that question mark in CN. If there is arch fracture as well as uh, uh, FC fracture is there, 
Then I modify that pre auricular question mark in CN in a way that I access that arch as well as left uh, uh, that uh, FC area also with the CNC so that we have not to make an NC in the in the uh, in the uh, left light area. But if you are not going with the procedure approach and there, there's not associated arch, arch factor or you are not going to open that arch, then you have to make left liberal in CN. Or if you are static conscious or patient is static conscious, then upper blepharoplasty in CN. With that in CN, you can uh, you can expose that area. Once you have exposed, you will uh, uh, you will reduce that fracture. And there are different reduction methods also. You can just reduce it with, with, with periosteal elevators. You can drill a hole and then insert a wire and pull that wire with that. You can reduce it this or you can make hole in the front uh, bone also and then by, and also in the frontal pass with the hematic bone and pass a wire and then pull that wire and then say at the same time push that segment with the periosteal elevator depending upon the situation you reduce that area and once you have reduced then then, then definitely what will you do you have to uh, to, uh, to select your fixation technique either if you have reduced with a wire you can tighten that wire also wire uh, uh, will also uh, keep this uh, segment in place the wires, the problem with the wires is that wires give one dimensional stability. Plates give the routine linear plates, they give two dimensional st stability. But there are also 3D plates. These are also in the latest advances that use of 3D plates. 3D plates give 3D, uh, 3D uh, uh, stability, three dimensional stability. And once you, uh, uh, you have, uh, have reduced this, if uh, the wire is there, you have passed already to reduce the reduction purposes, tighten that wire only either transfer sheets or figure of it and if the, you, uh, you have reduced and no wire, wire was not used then you uh, fix it with the four hole plate or five hole plate and the rule of fixation is that central hole should be on the fracture line and two holes uh, or screws should be fixed on each side of the fracture line and if it was not so displaced and you can fix it with the with the uh, with, uh, with the four hole plate then uh, all uh, uh, screws on the sides of the plate uh, just with the intermediate area of the plate on the fracture line and if there were multiple segments you have to select some lengthy plate for that purpose and you fix that plate with that and then after fixation definitely you will uh, irrigate that area if there is some bleeding point you have to get, uh, you have to get hemostasis and then after that you, uh, uh, you uh, close that and underlying layers, uh, sub, uh, uh, soft, uh, underlying soft tissue should be closed with resorbable sutures and skin uh, skin with the uh, with the non sutures suture like bone. Yes. Any other question? In the in the neurological causes, which nerves are responsible in diplopia? Okay, three, four, six. Three, four, six. Applumotor, trochlear, and abusion. LR six SO four O three. Am I right? I think <laughs> many of the people will know uh, better than me because uh, I studied, I think, uh, anatomy in 99 and 2000. Huh? And uh, <laughs> okay. your knowledge should be relatively fresh than me. Hmm? Uh, uh, this uh, uh, LR6, SO4O3, these are the nerves which supply the extraocular muscles. And once the nerve supply of any of the extraocular muscle get disrupt, disrupted, then there, there will be uh, there will be uh, that the movement uh, the role of that muscle will be no longer, and then definitely there will be dystrophia, and because that side will, uh, will not be able to move properly and will not be in coordination with the other side, and uh, um, uh, uh, among the neurological causes, these are the nerves which are responsible. Okay. Any other question? And these these three all of these three nerves they come through the through the spiorbital fissure. And if there is damage to spiorbital fissure, not only these nerves will be damaged, but the branches of ophthalmic division of trigeminal, that is frontal branch, which then divides into supraorbital and supratrochlear while coming out through the orbit, and then the your nerve nerve and lacrimal nerve. These, these are the nerves which also pass through the spiorbital fission. When these get damaged, then other features related to the nerves will also be there in case of spiorbital fission syndrome. And if the, all these three uh, motor nerves, that is three, four, six, these are get damaged, and they, the, the all muscles get, uh, get affected, then there will be ophthalmoplegia. Ophthalmoplegia means the person will not be able to move the globe. 
Moreover, they could also be, uh, be then fixed dilated pupil over there. Loss of direct and indirect light, light, light reflex also be there. Loss of corneal reflex be there. Loss of accommodation reflex be there. Loss of, uh, 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 you can say, sensation from forehead will be there. These are different features of, of spheroidal features syndrome. G, any other question? I think any? it is clear to everyone. Okay. Anyone asks uh, wants to ask uh, by audio you call? Any resident over there among the participants? From, from any where? resident? Any resident? Any from anywhere? Resident? FCS student? I think Amjadina was there. Is there or not? I think she has left. She is he, he here. Okay. <laughs> huh? All right, <laughs> he he has left because. Chale, ठीक है अगर किसी का और question है तो ठीक है नहीं तो Allah करें Allah फिर thank you so much. ठीक है ठीक है thank you.